What's happening, rugby fans? I hope that you are doing well. Welcome to Rugga United, the show where you and I, every single week, we get to talk about the big stories that are happening in the world of rugby. As you already know, the Springboks were unfortunately beaten by Ireland by one point. Springbok fans, we know the story. World Cup quarterfinal, one point. World Cup semi-final, one point. And then Rugby World Cup final, the Springboks won it by one point. But unfortunately, this time they were beaten by Ireland by a single point. It was a 25 to 24 point scoreline in Durban at Kings Park. Quite a painful one. I'd love to dissect this game. I've got my brother, the man who loves his rugby, one of the best rugby journalists in the country. His name is Hotto Silo. Hotto, my brother, how are you doing? Good, how are I'm you? doing well, my brother. You're smiling yet again. Um, are you concerned about the Springboks? Are you happy that they were beaten by Ireland? Why are you smiling this week? Because normally the Springboks <laughs> are winning, so I understand the smile. I want to know why you're yeah. smiling this week. Um, I think I think the, this will be a friendly reminder down the line mm. um, of why we need to get our game plan, the new game plan, mm. up to speed. Um, if 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 we'd won that match, I feel uh, certain things would have been overlooked. And I think currently the the Springboks are in in a transition mode and, and are, are evolving. And and to go down to the wire with uh, Ireland, who are number two in the world. We have occupied the number one spot for, you know, the past four to eight years. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it's 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 really you know, uh, kudos to to Rassi and the team because if you are evolving second week in a new game plan mm -hmm. and you are able to go toe to toe with the best uh, in the world, it, it means we are doing something right. And uh, unfortunate at the end, I think uh, when you when you take the two test matches in contrast. In the first test match, uh, the Springboks started like a house on fire, yeah. but also couldn't close out uh, and struggled to hold on till mm -hmm. the end of the match. Ireland finished strong. Ireland finished strong again, but they started like a house on fire. And I yeah. think South Africa started well in the second half, but couldn't close out the match. You know, uh, when you look at how uh, in the last, what, two minutes, we had a scrum, you know, in our own, uh, in our own 22 mm -hmm. uh, typical South Africans, we could have scrummed it um, uh, and then maybe an eighth man picks it up, hit it up, a rug, mm. hit it up again and perhaps kick it long or, but we tried to run it out this time around, which just shows the different intent that the Springboks had and, and it created a turnover where, you know, Frawley was able to, mm -hmm. to kick that last gasp draw, drop goal. So there's a lot of teething problems in, in, in the new game plan. Um, it is expected, like we spoke about it uh, a couple of weeks ago, that it will happen. Yeah. Um, when, when Rassi and Jacques initially took over, we were bleeding tries before we started literally becoming the best defensive unit in the world. And before we become the best attacking a unit in the world. Um, I think we will have a few mishaps, but also our defensive structure will have to change because when you are an attack-minded uh, team, you know there's certain vulnerabilities that you leave yourself up to, um, and and I think you know the defensive uh, mentality will have to change, and the way that we defend will also have to change because the scramble defense mm. becomes that more a little bit more important so um you know not too bad one point in it uh, squared series now we we start looking forward to portugal and the rugby championship most certainly let's talk about andy farrell we yeah. spoke about him last week yeah. his approach in terms of taking on the spring box mm. what what did they do well because at least from what i saw in the encounter on saturday in yeah. durban is it almost felt as though they out muscled the Springboks yeah. at their own game. And yeah. looking at the fact that you had Eben Etzebeth and, and Porter from Ireland bleeding, I mean, the blood was <laughs> literally like rushing down their face. You could see that it was a very physical encounter, yeah. but in terms of the physicality, the mm. box were almost like lagging a, a little bit behind. Yeah. Your thoughts on the game? I think uh, Ireland came with, with a different game plan. If you look at um, how they played in the first test, uh, it was all about, you know, skill and guile. And I think it's it's their last um, match of the season, and and they wanted to to throw everything at it. Mm -hmm. uh, there were subtle uh, changes in in the team. Uh, guys like Bandiaki were part of the team. Um, you had Tag Furlong move from lock to 
to to to um, to flank, you know, which added a bit more muscle to to their loose forward trio, and and they they, they bulked up in, in in the second row as well. So, um, you know, in terms of how they chose their team, um, you know, we, we could have read a little bit better into it in terms of their pack was a, also a little bit heavier than our pack. So they were all about outmuscling us and making sure that uh, at the breakdown they dominate, they, they dominate the collision points and, and, and they made it clear within the first minute, I think Vili Leroux was substituted, yep. <laughs> you know, within, within seconds you were like seeing stars, minutes. yeah, mm. and, and uh, they just brought it, just, j just from the get-go, they threw everything at it. I think also um, the win relieves a lot of pressure from, from Farrell. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, in terms of collisions, I think the, the, the Springboks rested on their laurels a little bit. Um, in Afrikaans, they say they were a bit windhat, you know, mm. go, go to... Too to, confident. To, too confident mm -hmm. going, going to Durban. And, and I think it came back to bite them. We woke up in the second half. Um, uh, and then I think it was a little bit uh, late in the contest. But, you know, Ireland deserved the victory by... By all means, because they dominated all the areas that need domination. You know, when was the last time you saw Yevon Ezebeth bleed? When was the Yo. last time you saw Franco Mostert bleed? When was the last time you saw, um, you know, uh, Malcolm Marx come back from an injury and go back and get injured again? And get injured again, mm. you know. So, um, when was the last time you saw Villila Roux get into a, into a clash and be stretched off? So, it's, it's, it was just a, ga a, a case of, um, you know, Ireland making a statement to say they do belong at number one and they don't want to leave South African shores as a 2-0. How great would it have been um, if it was a three-test series with but everything to play for in the last test? But unfortunately, it is what it is. World Rugby and the scheduling, but yeah, mm. we'll have to take it on the But chip. let's touch on that, right? Yeah. The Springboks are taking on Portugal yeah. this weekend. Mm. Let's paint a different scenario. Yeah. Looking at the last two matches that we've seen in Durban and at Loftus, if the Springboks and Ireland were to play another test this yeah. weekend, yeah. the third one, who do you think would have won that test? Because a part of me feels like the Irish might have actually taken the series. Looking at the last game, they would have had tons of momentum heading into a third game in the series. But Aaron, like I've told you before, that a Springbok, uh, a wounded Springbok side mm -hmm. is a dangerous side because I think they, they, they get a kick out of, out of being, you know, backs to the wall type of guys and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, people don't believe we can do it. And, and they somehow want that chasing the sun speech from us, you know, to remind them. You made a promise. Oh, you made a promise mm -hmm. and, and all those things. So South African teams in the past, you know, seem to be quite good as these comeback kids. Nobody gives them a chance um, type, of, type of team. And I think the mindset needs to change going forward. If we want to yeah. dominate world rugby for, for the next few how many ever years then we need to 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 step up and you know take responsibility of being a number one uh, side in the world and and win every test match um, i like what uh, scott robinson the new uh, new zealand coach uh, said and they asked him ah oh, you know it's your first season in charge you might lose a few in between because the guys will be any problems see the problems mm. and he said but why can't we learn and win you know why do you have to learn and lose and, and, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a great mindset to have. And I think, you know, South Africans also need to have that kind of mentality where as much as we, we, we're learning a new game plan, as much as we're taking ourselves to, to a new level, um, why, cannot, why can we not learn and win mm -hmm. at the same time? You know, so I just feel that, um, yes, we could have, t uh, I feel we could have won it because of that um, mentality that I'm talking about. But I think going forward, we should be able to win any test match because we are the world champions and we should be retaining the world number one with the you know, embarrassment of riches that we have in terms of talent uh, in this country and, and, and globally. We, we shouldn't be asking you know, or making excuses for not winning test matches. Let's talk about Andre Pollard, the man who basically scored every single point for the Springboks this past weekend. I love Andre Pollard. Yeah. Absolutely love him. The problem is when he doesn't perform yeah. and the Springboks don't score any tries. Yeah. The question that I had on Saturday is how can the Springboks score tries 
yeah. when the defense from the opponents, from the, for example the Irish, is so strong because yeah. I think a try in the first half or the second half could have given the box the confidence to just seal out the game yeah. and operate differently. You must also remember Andre Pollard uh, started playing pro rugby when we were still in high school. Mm -hmm. And the type of rugby that South African schools play is, is, is very attractive, easy on the eye, uh, very running rugby orientated. And when he made it into, into the World Juniors um, as a 17-year-old, um, he was dominating, mm. you know, dominated the game line. Um, even when he made his Springbok uh, debut at number 10 at Ellis Park, scored a superb try against the All Blacks under the sticks, you know, attacking the game line. And he looked the part and he has the physique. And, but then you must remember then there was a new game plan that was forced upon him. Um, True. Remember when Faf was still at the Lions, he played a lot of running rugby and everybody felt that this new rugby game plan under Rassi Rasmus and Jacques Nienaber is going to stifle these guys and whatnot. Four years later, it won us the Rugby World Cup, you know, and then another, another World Cup. And mm. now these guys for the past six, seven years have been playing a specific type of game plan, you know. They've been outcoached from their natural yes. instincts, mm. you know, and now seven, eight years down the line, you're asking them to, to reinvent themselves <laughs> again and mm. play that kind of rugby. Mm. Um, and, and unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like a switch. Whenever you are under pressure, the mind always goes back to default settings. And, and, and that's what happened. I, I don't see the fuff from, from, the, from the lines. Mm. I don't see the 100 Pollard who burst onto the scene. But what I can tell you is that we do have players that can fit this new game plan. You do have a... Uh, 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 Mani Lipok who can play at number 10. You do have a, a Sasha Feinberg Gomuzul. You do have a Ashwin Willemse who can who can step anyone in a in a telephone booth. Grant Williams. You have a Grant Williams With at number pace. nine. You know, you you have all these players that are coming through the system. You have a Sia Masuku, mm -hmm. you know, so you have so many players who can fit into into this new game plan. So unfortunately, um, in the first two test matches, it exposed um, some of the players, mm. uh, some of the players were, were, left, yeah, were, were left a little bit hanging to dry, but those are the players you can rely on if you are playing a kicking game, uh, a, more more, defensive. A, a more defensive type of approach. So um, unfortunately for, for Andre, it's, it, it's either he evolves or certain people are going to you know, get ahead of him in the packing order and this week uh, those players will be getting an opportunity mm. Mani Lebok at 9 um, and, and, and some other young I mean at 10 and some other younger players coming through Brittany. let's move on to the rule book the segment where you and I get to talk about those basic rugby rules that we might not understand right yeah. Hoto is our guy, the man who will be uh, <laughs> explaining all of these technicalities of the game. So the scenario, Hoto, yeah. is something that everyone saw this past weekend. The reason why the Springboks were beaten by that single point. Yeah. Frawley is the man who kicked that drop goal, right? Yeah. So I would like for you to explain to us what exactly is a drop goal. And it sounds a little bit weird because we are used to talking about tries and penalties in rugby yeah. but now we're talking about a drop goal and that's yeah. usually like a football term yeah. explain to us what exactly is a drop goal and when does it happen in a rugby game so a drop goal is is, is a field goal that attem goal attempt um, that can happen uh, during during the 80 minutes of the match it can happen on anywhere on the field um, but the ball has to bounce off the ground okay and up before you can kick it. Hence, it's called a drop goal. So you have to drop it mm -hmm. and it has to hit the, the turf and then bounce up before you can connect with it on your foot. Um, then and, it has to go through the sticks. And of it course. has to go through the mm. sticks and that gives you three points. Okay. You know, so it's an option for, for three points. Um, and the other options for three points is if you get a penalty and you, and you place kick it, where you see the guy bringing a tee, you, you tee mm. it up, and, and, and you place you, you place kicker. Those are your two options for getting three points. Um, but with the drop goal, you don't really need a penalty or a favor or a whistle blown. Mm. You, you can literally do it from anywhere at any time of the game. So Frawley took his opportunity and... Twice, he took it twice and he made it happen. And made let's it talk happen. about the tactics of yeah. the game. Often we've seen the Springboks using the scrum 
to get a penalty mm. and then they use the kicking tee as you just explained mm. to then get the three points yeah. where exactly in the game from a strategic perspective would you say one should use the ball or the scrum to get three points off a penalty and like the Irish used this past weekend where can you actually use a drop goal in your opinion I think you can use a drop goal anytime when you are in striking range you know okay. um, uh, I, I feel especially in test matches uh, scoreboard pressure is, is something that, that that that's really big in test match rugby and if you are visiting the opposition half or the 22 and you are not getting any points and you have a kicker who can who can hit them you know from from anywhere a guy like Sasha can kick it from 50 meters even you know so um, you know it's 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 an easy three points if 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 you set him up uh, nicely and make sure he's nice and deep the forwards protect him and give him something uh, to head at um, and and I think you know in terms of uh, attack um, it, it's a nice option, to have yeah, option to know? have and and you also keep defenses very honest because they don't know what you're doing are you running at us should we be waiting should we be pressurizing you um so you can also always uh you know make them second guess um you know the the fly half if if he's got that weapon in his pocket let's move on to the game that's happening in bloomis bloomfontaine a town that is seeing a lot of sporting action which is definitely a good thing the springboks will be taking on portugal in bloemfontein yeah. this weekend i want to talk about the squad that rassi erasmus has selected for this particular encounter yeah i want to take you back to a conversation we had three weeks ago yeah about sia masuku yeah. right <laughs> at the time i was like given yeah, we're taking on wales sia masuku has had a phenomenal season why isn't he starting in that number 10 jersey? Yeah. Then you said to me, you're like, relax. As long as you're within the squad, you'll get your chance to play. Yeah. Then we spoke about the Portugal game. Then we were like, no, don't worry, down the line, Portugal are going to come to South Africa mm -hmm. and he might feature in that game. Might be in the operative role. Might, he might. So, Siamasuku is yeah. not in the squad. Yeah. He's not wearing the number 10 jersey that no. has been given to Mani Labok. He's not on the bench. Talk to me about Siamasuku. I mean, Siama Suku is, is, is a fantastic player. Um, he, he, he gets the back line ticking. Um, he's, he's, he's very good in terms of creativity. He can kick out of hand very well. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's one thing that when Rassi was quizzed about uh, Siama Suku, he spoke about the little stats that are not the popular stats. You know, there's, there's the easy stats we look at that he scored three ties. He's got eight shots at goal and, and whatever. And, and the certain stats that he doesn't take, you know, um, how quickly does he get up from the floor after making a hit? You know, um, the, the level of fitness, um, the intensity, um, the amount of tackles he makes in the season. I think he was averaging about 63% um, in his tackle rate stats. So there's a lot of little technical um, you know, areas where, areas where you improve. get marked on mm. um, if you are a Springbok and, and depending on whatever game plan that they, they, they trying to install. And Manin Lebok spent about a year before he, he got his first crack and he was one of the, the best players in the URC the year before. Uh, 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 Willemse was the same thing. So mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a lot of boxes that you need to tick before you make it into the team. But as long as if you are in the system, your time will come. There's four years until the next uh, Rugby World Cup. Anything can happen mm. in the space of four years. And um, Rassi doesn't believe in uh, picking a guy on form and throwing him in the deep end and then he doesn't perform in one match and the media is at him, throw him out. and, and <laughs> psychologically he's out. He made yeah. an example with one player that he played with was uh, Khafi Dutoy, you know, one of the most gifted flowers I've ever seen, you know, with the lethal um, uh, left foot, uh, he could kick a ball a mile, he could, he could run like Carlos Spencer, if you remember Carlos Spencer who played for, for the Auckland Blues and, and, and for New Zealand, a bag of tricks. But unfortunately for, for Hafi, um, he got his opportunity and he just got thrown in and the team was still in disarray and all of those things and he was expected to do miracles and unfortunately his Springbok career never took off. So Rassi does, does not believe in throwing guys literally into in, into the deep the end deep so end. and I think let's let's be patient let's 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 trust let's the process patient. let's be patient <laughs> uh, let's trust the process he knows what he's doing um, and uh, once you have three or four fly halves 
who are good enough to represent South Africa at a Rugby World Cup. It's, it's a privileged position to sit in. Yeah. So let him grow, let him develop, let him play in a team that's winning. We still have the rugby championship to go through. We still have the end of year tour that's coming at the end of the year. Mm. We still have how many test matches next year and the, and the, and the years that follow. So I, 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 I'm not worried. Um, I'm not losing any, any, any sleep over Sia not being picked in this match. We do have quality fly halves in Feinberg and Mani Lebok who are picked mm. for this weekend. And hopefully Sia will get his chance. And when he does, he'll grab it with both opportunities. With both Last teams. question, your favorite player, Sasha Feinberg, Gomez mm -hmm. Why is he not in the starting 15? Why is he starting off the bench <laughs> in, in your thoughts? I mean, he came on against Wales and he slotted that absolute monster. I believe it was yeah. over 50 meters that kick. Yeah. We saw him play against the Irish um, at Loftus a little bit as well as in Durban. Yeah. I thought Sasha would be in the starting 15, especially given yeah. the fact that we've seen him play. He does well with the ball, a little bit inexperienced, yeah. but I thought this was his shot. I think they've given him a crack. Um, they've seen what they want. Um, also, they, they, they don't want to risk injuries before, before the rugby championship. I think a guy like Fassi also deserves a run. Um, a guy like Mani Libok hasn't featured in all three test matches that the Springboks uh, have played this season. So it's his opportunity to stretch his legs a little bit. And um, uh, Sasha also gives you a, a nice cover on the bench. You know, you can play flower half center and fullback. So should anything happen in terms of uh, the ship probably rocking mm. in a way that it's not supposed yeah. to be rocking and whatever. You need you a know, plan B. You need a plan B. Mm. You can always throw a Sasha on at either 10, 12 or 15. You know, but you also have a Quan Horn who covers 15 and, 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 and 14. So it's, it's a lovely balance in terms of the two backline players, uh, two backline outfield players on the bench. It gives you a nice cover because it, 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 it covers your entire centers, your fly half, your entire centers, full back and wing. So in terms of safety, um, I think it's, 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 it's a very safe mm. pick in terms of the match day 20. Perfect utility player, yes, perfect as, they, as they love to talk about. Yeah. In terms of what we are expecting in Bloemfontein at the Toyota Stadium, you've got the Springboks that have named Salman Morat as the first Muslim captain yeah. that will captain the Springboks. You've got seven uncapped players. You've got young players like Pepsi Butelezi um, coming into that starting 15. Yeah. Give me a scoreline. What are you predicting in terms of the game that we will see at the Toyota Stadium? I'm seeing a high scoring game uh, in terms of the players that, that, that have been selected. You, you know, you, you look at uh, your loose forwards very fast, Pepsi, um, Ivan Ruiz. Um, they both play for teams that keep, like keeping ball in hand. Um, you look at your scrum half and flower half, uh, you know, Kubas Reynach, we remember him from the Rugby mm -hmm. World Cup scoring yes, four tries. Um, you have a Mani Lipok at 10, Mr. No Look, uh, kick pass. We will never forget. You know, <laughs> uh, he can create space from anywhere. We know what uh, weekend special Fasi can do from the from, from, from 15 cover up position by sidestepping. Brilliant hands. Um, we, we've got Andre the Giant at, at number 12. <laughs> Andre um, Estreiser. You know, he can either bash it up or, you know, hold it up. His game has, has, has improved dramatically since moving over to the Harlequins in England. So his, his skill set is also quite broad. Lucanio Am coming back. Uh, it would be lovely to see him. We also know him, remember him with his no-look pass yes. during COVID. Yay! Um, we'll never uh, forget. And, 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 you know, so, so it, it, it's a team that's, that's got, you know, some electrifying and exciting type of players. You look at even your props, you know, they're a bit lighter, not renowned for their scrumming mm -hmm. per se, but, you know, uh, they are very fast around the park. It's the game that the Springboks are it's, now looking it, to play. It's fast, attacking rugby. Attacking rugby. And the opposition as well wouldn't want to be in confrontation mm. with, with, with South Africa. I don't think they produce the, the type of props and, and, and big yeah. lads that we produce. They produce down our here. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, <laughs> no, you know, so I think I think it's gonna be a high scoring game. Um, Give me a scoreline. 52-18. 18 Yeah. So you're saying I must get my betting slip ready? Ah, get your betting slip ready. <laughs> Hello, my brother. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. Yeah. And enjoy the raga on Saturday. Most definitely. I'd like to get your thoughts. The Springboks are taking on Portugal in Bloemfontein at the Toyota Stadium. What do you think that final scoreline is going to be? And of course, looking at the style that the Springboks are currently playing at the moment. 
fast running rugby, where do you think the Springboks are at? As Hotto mentioned, the Springboks are trying a new game, building up to the 2027 Rugby World Cup in Australia. Where do you think the Springboks find themselves at the moment? As always, this is Rugby United, and we'll see you again next week. I saw a cherry, and it was red.